Um, I would like you to tell me how many people in the world use social media? So you've got A, answer A, B or C. Um, if you want to just type these into the chat box, we will take a look at your, your answers, see what everyone reckons. So A, 2.6 billion, B, 5.3 billion or C, 3.8 billion. Oh, quite a mix of answers there. Most people heading for B or C. It looks pretty set between B and C, actually. Right, we're we ready. Let's take a look then. So the answer is 3.8 billion, which when you consider that 4.54 billion people have access to the internet, that basically means that pretty much everyone who has access to the internet is using social media. So it's, it's kind of a big deal to try and get your voice heard in that, that kind of um, situation. But hopefully, Jen and Anna should be able to sh shed a bit of light on how to do this effectively. So without further ado, I will hand over to them now. So hi everyone, I'm Anna and I am the digital project manager for the E Plus communications team. And I'm Jen and I'm the Senior Digital Communications Manager. So we're going to get started with social media today uh, by discussing firstly what your goal is. So when considering your social media, the first and most important thing to think about is your purpose and your goal. We know that you've signed up to this session today because you want to find more about how you can share your project successes over your social media channels. But thinking beyond that, it's really important for you to also define what your overall goal is. So, for example, what are you trying to achieve from your social media? It could be, for example, that you want to attract potential new participants or get your organisation noticed in your uh, local community or even find future opportunities. So by defining this goal from the outset, you're able to use this as a checking point and you'll be able to tailor your social media activity to fulfilling this overall aim or goal. So once you've defined your overall purpose and goal, the next logical step is to think about the audience that you're trying to reach. So as Heather mentioned, with the online world being quite competitive, uh, social media is very saturated. Communications is no longer about broadcasting your message as widely as possible, and you'll be much better to narrow your focus on those that you really want to engage with. So in order to do this, we'd recommend you conduct an audience mapping exercise. So this might sound a bit daunting, but it can be as simple or as complex as you want to make it. Um, everyone's audience map is unique to that organisation. And what you'll find is that there's a number of different groups that you want to target for different reasons. So for us at the Erasmus Plus UK National Agency, we have five different sectors that we're trying to target across education, training and youth. All of those have very different interests, they have different online behaviours um, and so we need to adapt accordingly based on which sector we're trying to reach. Beyond beneficiary organisations, we're also trying to talk to uh, potential participants, partner organisations from across Europe, as well as national stakeholders and sector bodies. So it's quite a lot of people to target. Um, so on the slide, you can see a couple of examples of audience groups that you might want to uh, be targeting with your communications. So when you do this exercise, what you want to think about are the demographics of each group, um, the, their interests, what influences them, the kinds of people that they trust, the media that they consume, and then you want to think a little bit about their online behaviour as well. So there might be certain platforms that they prefer to use, 
um, and there might be certain times of the day that they're more active and um, other times where you're just not going to reach them at all. So if they're only operating in working hours, there's no point you posting at 8 p.m. So if this sounds a little bit like you don't know where to start, a good a good tactic is that you could always just ask them. So we've done this before. We've sent out um, surveys to our newsletter subscribers. We've done polls on Facebook and Twitter. Um, and we've basically just asked our audience what kind of content do they want to see and um, what would they be interested in and equally a little bit about their online habits so so that we can adapt our activities accordingly. Um, I'd recommend that this exercise is a live document so it's not just something you do once and save somewhere and don't refer back to. Things can change like new platforms can come up or your audience might suddenly dip, like the situation we find ourselves in now, people's online behaviour has has certainly changed. So it's good to refresh refresh this grid a few times a year um, because it will all help you to be more strategic in the content that you produce. So the more data and intel you collect about your audience, the better equipped you will be to create content that will really appeal to them. So now you know who you want to talk to and what they want to hear. It's about the types of content that you want to produce. So Anna's going to talk a little bit about how to make that as engaging as possible. So I was oh, so over the next couple of slides, um, we've put a list together of some top ways you can create good quality and engaging content. So creating again, engaging content is essential to making the most of your social media channels and also keeping your audience engaged. So we'll kick off with uh, incorporating photos and videos. Uh, so including photos and videos into your social media posts is the easiest way to boost your engagement. So we at Erasmus Plus have found on our social media channels that posts that include videos or photos perform the best. And this is because uh, they add a visual element to your content and can, form, and can be more easily caught by the eye of users scrolling through their feeds. So um, you can, if you need help with this, you can join a photo and video workshops for tips on how to create uh, content on a budget. So uh, most people do think that to have photos and videos, uh, they need to be a uh, professionally professional look or be of top quality. But actually, surprisingly, uh, your images and videos don't have to be like professional pressure, professionally finished. So research has actually found that users engage better with amateur uh, or real visual real visuals. Um, so this this is because it shows a, a better sense of authenticity and also humanizes your brand. Uh, this fortunately makes sourcing images and videos a lot easier for you. So you can collect the images, images and videos, and videos as your uh, project progresses and you can also get your participants involved as well. So if they're happy to share or get involved in their creation, then why not get them involved? Um, another great way to boost engagement is by creating shareable content like infographics. Um, so the best way to this is a great way to encourage people to share your message and to do this you can put it in an eye-catching format that's easy to share so you can use infographics to share key stats about your project or key insights uh, and it's also really nice uh, to share quotes or testimonials from your participants in this format as well and then we will move on to uh, using storytelling in your posts so people love hearing about stories and especially personal testi testimonials as people like to read about the human impact of your projects. People trust personal accounts more than they would say an account from a brand. So it's really important to encourage your participants to tell their own stories and share them with you and your audience. Putting real people uh, with real experiences in front of the camera has a really strong impact and also provides your audience with a refreshing break from the normal stream of content they see from your accounts. 
we have tagging next. So a great way to not only boost the engagement of your posts, but also to increase the reach of your posts is by tagging other relevant relevant accounts into your posts. So for example, you could tag in project partners, uh, other organizations, or even uh, particip participants if that's relevant. So this adds a uh, uh, a curiosity, curiosity for your users, for your users to, to, to sorry, someone sorry, got, someone their, got my, their, card. my card at the moment. Oh, thank you. So this adds a curiosity for your users um, as it encourages them to click and interact with your post more and is also a great way for you to interact with other accounts and encourage them uh, to share your content to new audiences. So if we then move on to part two of creating engaging content, Thank you. Uh, next up, we have utilizing emojis. So it's really like really impactful to also incorporate emojis into your social media posts. Uh, we at Erasmus Plus have actually recently started testing out emojis in our own social media. And we have found that this has performed really well for us. So we've even seen improvements in our engagement in our posts as well. So why why are emojis so uh, good to use people engage well with emojis as like images they are eye-catching and also speak to the emotional part of people's brains so they make your content stand out look more animated uh, more personable and are also a great way for breaking up lengthy pieces of text so it makes it easier for for uh, your users to digest and read Emojis don't also have to be just a, like the faces we've got an example of in this slide. Uh, you could also use flags uh, or other of the symbols that are available. So we, uh, for example, use uh, specific symbols to create a bullet point list in our social media posts. And we found that this is quite effective. And next uh, we have campaign days. So consider joining in with local or national or international campaign days like uh, Youth Work Week, uh, EU Vocational Skills Week and Earth Day. Uh, so campaign days will help you reach new audiences who are interested in that specific topic and they are also a really good tool for you to come up with plan uh, and plan new pieces of content. Uh, so similar to campaign days, using hashtags can be uh, a good way to reach new audiences uh, with interest in the specific topic again. So we, I'd say hashtags tend to work best on uh, Twitter and Instagram, but you can util utilize them on Facebook as well if you'd like. Um, you can also think about creating uh, a personal hashtag for your own project or if you have a campaign that you're running. Um, as it makes it easier for audiences to find information uh, and content about your project. So, for example, as Heather mentioned, we have the hashtag E plus people. Um, and finally, we have uh, behind the scenes and live videos. Uh, so behind the scenes content can range from personalising your social media responses to uh, sharing a blog post written by a staff member, posting a live video or creating a boomerang with uh, some of your team members uh, in there. Um, so this kind of content works really well um, as it sparks natural curiosity, increases your brand trust and most importantly adds faces to the names uh, of, the, uh, of the people that your users are interacting with on a daily or weekly basis. Um, so this this helps to build like more of a genuine uh, and connection with your audience and improve your relationship so live videos are also create a sense of urgency and like a fear of missing out element uh, so uh, they're a great way to capture the attention of your audience in real time uh, this type of content also works well when you are hosting events, whether they're virtual, like we have what we're doing now, or physical, uh, they're really useful to kind of share a behind the scenes element of you and your brand. So if we look at the example that we've got on the screen here from Everything is Possible, they've actually ticked quite a few of the points uh, we've covered in the past uh, two slides. 
and we can see that their post has received quite a good amount of engagement. So a couple, uh, a few of the things they've uh, used is tagging accounts, uh, using a video element in which we can see uh, participants are sharing their own personal stories and the footage also has some behind the scenes element as well included. Uh, they've also added an extra of including subtitles into their video, which uh, makes it easier for the video to be followed, even if there's no sound. So I'll pass you back on to Jen, who will now discuss uh, how you can measure your success. Thanks, Anna. So, so just because you've published your content, unfortunately, the social media work isn't quite over. Um, the final stage of the process is to think about how successful it's been and analyse your performance. So the question, what does success look like, will entirely depend on the original goal that you'd set and the reason for you being on social media. So depending on what that aim was, it will impact the metric that you're most interested in. So for instance, if you wanted to attract new participants to your project, you're likely to be interested in the reach of your posts. So how many people are actually seeing your content? Um, you also might want to look at the shares and retweets to see what kind of exposure you're getting. Um, if you were more interested in uh, views on views of a news story on your website or a press release that you've put out on your website, then you'd be a lot more interested in the conversion rate. So this will be tracking the link clicks from your social media analytics. And you can also match that up with your website analytics to see how those users behaved online once they reached your website. So it could be that 30 people clicked through uh, through to your link from your social media account, but you also want to see the overall picture and know then how much time they spent on that web page. Was it three seconds or three minutes? Did they navigate to other web pages? And if you put the social media analytics with the web website analytics, you'll get an idea of how high a quality conversion it was and whether you're targeting the right people with your content. So the easiest way to access your social media analytics is actually through the inbuilt analytics and insights dashboards that most social media platforms have. So Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, they all have their own. And if it's not something that you've looked at before, then we'll share the links as to how you can access your own analytics. Um, so on the slide, we've got a, an example of our Twitter analytics. So this is the Erasmus Plus UK account. Um, and what you'll see is that the, the dashboard itself does the work for you. There's no trawling through um, lots of data to work out which, which post was most successful. It will tell you each month what your top tweet was. And you can also see um, uh, that it's showing us our top mention. So that's a different account that's tagged us. Just so happens to be one of our case study speakers from today. So we'll hear a little bit from League Football Education in a little while. Um, so this, these, the, the top tweet is basically the gold dust content that you want to hold on to, you want to replicate. So what I would recommend is that you spend just 15 minutes maybe each month going on these dashboards and reviewing exactly why you think why you think it was so su successful. Was it some of the techniques that Anna's already mentioned, such as hashtags? Um, was there a great image or a video? Um, and if you just spend at least 15 minutes analysing the content, then in the long run, you'll 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 get more reward for your time because you'll know that you're putting out the the highest the most effective content that you can if you're really not sure what makes a great post or you you go on your analytics and you think no that's not as successful as you want to be there's some great tools around social listening that you can do so this is a concept where you can track 
keywords, hashtags and trends that relate to your your brand, your industry, um, but you're not restricted to just looking at your own content. You can see what lots of other people are posting. So you can then use inspiration from other people to, to create more effective content yourselves. So we use um, Keyhole to track hashtags and TalkWalker, which will show us keywords and people that have mentioned us. You could also do something like create a Twitter list of accounts that you find quite inspirational, and then you can go, go to that list, see what content they're producing, and again, do, do a similar analysis of why you think that content's working and get inspiration to create your own content. Another way to test your performance would be through A-B testing. So this is simply two, two versions of the same content, but changing one variable. So that could be uh, tweeting in the morning and tweeting at 9 p.m. And then based on the results, you can then work out whether your audience are more likely to engage with it in the morning or the evening. Uh, we've also done this with the emojis, as Anna mentioned. And over time, the results of these A-B tests will help you to shape your content and produce the most, the highest quality of posts every time. OK, so we'll move on to uh, the next slide, which we're going to share with you some final top tips for uh, boosting your uh, social media channels and creating uh, good quality content. So firstly, don't be shy to reuse and repurpose your old content. So when creating content for social media, you don't need to reinvent the wheel each time. You can think about how you can adapt a press release or an old blog post you've already written and make it suitable for your social media. Or how about some of those top posts from your analytics that Jen mentioned? If the content is still relevant, then why not post it again on your Twitter or Facebook? So, for example, we have started to retweet some old popular tweets or polls that we've had before or even use an old blog post uh, that is relevant to an upcoming campaign day. And we will reshare this on Facebook and Twitter and we still receive a good amount of engagement. Uh, you can also think about looking at using scheduling platforms. Uh, so scheduling platforms for your social media posts will not only help you plan ahead, but many like Hootsuite, for example, uh, also provide you with some extra analytical insights. Uh, linked to this, scheduling platforms also help you to plan content in advance around those, cam around those campaign days uh, that we've mentioned earlier. So uh, creating a content calendar also can be a good way for you to keep track of the things that are upcoming. And this calendar can take the format of a simple Excel uh, or a Word document or even a Trello board. Uh, also, it's always important to think about quality over quantity. There's no point in being on social media, social media channels where you don't have much of an audience. So it's important for you to find out which social media channels your key audience is on, is most likely to be using the most and focus on promoting uh, your project through those channels. Um, it's also important not to overpost on Facebook and Twitter or any other social media channel you're using as you can be penalised by the social media uh, algorithms and also it can tend to make your account look a bit spammy. Uh, so for example we tend to stick to posting about uh, once a day on Facebook and about three to three to five times a week on Twitter. And finally uh, also important is to always refer back to your original purpose and goal and to make sure your content is relevant to your audience's interests and concerns. It's also good for you to think about um, making sure to have a two-way conversation with your audience. So ultimately remembering that social media at its core is about being social. Uh, so make sure you are engaging in two-way conversations and developing a relationship with your audience. 
It's also important to provide a human, e human element through your responses and engagements with other accounts, as people like to feel like they are talking to another human being and not a robot on the other side of the screen. So by increasing your own interactions with other accounts, this will also encourage conversation, interaction and networking on your own channel. So you can, creating conversation is also a great way for you to get your audience involved in creating content. So you can ask them questions and um, create polls on Twitter for them to contribute. And this leads perfectly to user generated content, which is our final top tip. So on the right, we have the example from St. Coleman's Primary School, which is, which is a really nice example of using participant generated content and creating a, a two way conversation as well. So Charlie is one of the pupils from St. Coleman's and he became interested in Belgium and their national football team. And so he decided to write a letter to the team. Uh, the school then shared this on their social media, which gained them a massive amount of likes. Uh, as well, they tagged the Belgium team who responded to this to thank Charlie and they later sent a video of their coach with a personal message to Charlie. So the original post had a, a tagging element, an image element, a human interest angle, and they also used um, a hashtag and a few emojis here and there. So this helped uh, the post reach a great amount of attention and also a good amount of engagement. So I'll now pass you back to Jen who will run through some uh, resources with you. So we've given you a bit of a whistle stop tour there. Um, so one thing I would recommend that you take a look at is the Erasmus Plus digital toolkit because a number of the elements that we've discussed today are included there. Um, and you can have a good read through. There's a little bit more insight as well into storytelling and blogging, and there's lots of links throughout to various resources. Um, so you can find it on the promotion and dissemination page of the Erasmus Plus website, and Sarah has just put a link to it in the chat box as well, so you can take a look there. Um, so as I mentioned, lots of social media platforms have inbuilt analytics and dashboards. They all have their own tutorials and walkthroughs uh, which will help you to navigate those systems. So if you're new to this, then that's a great place to start. We also use Hootsuite, as Anna mentioned, and they have a great uh, blog and help centre online. Um, so lots of useful resources there. There's so many training courses um, online for social media, but we've just put um, two, two here that we think are quite useful. So the Google Digital Garage have a free uh, Fundamentals of Digital Marketing course. Now, I believe it's about 40 hours worth of content, but you can just um, access the ones that are of most interest to you, um, or you can tackle it all, maybe little and often. Um, but it covers uh, using social media and engaging with users online. So we would really recommend that. And the Media Trust also has some really good social media content and guides that you can access as well. So that's everything from me and Anna, and we'll pass back to Heather. So thank you for listening. Thank you very much, guys. Hopefully that was interesting for everyone. I think there was a lot of a lot of information there, a lot of tips. So hopefully there's some stuff you can take away from that. Does anyone have any questions for Jen and Anna? Feel free to, to type or if you want to turn on your mic and ask a question verbally, that's fine as well. Um, I tend to use quite a lot, almost by accident, but I use quite a lot of the tips that you've um, come up with. So that, thanks for that, that's sort of, um, confirms a little bit that I'm on the right track. Um, one thing I've noticed is I tend to put quite a lot of content about our projects. I have a lot of members who um, seem to be following. They're following, they're looking, they're liking, but they don't contribute. So that's my first first question is how do I try? I, I've actually tried saying to them, um, please comment, tell me what you think. 
they don't. I don't know whether they're just shy of uh, social media. The second one is partly linked, um, and that is the present project that we're doing at the moment. I had resistance from the lead partner not to put anything on Facebook. Um, so I've stuck to putting on things from the National Agency uh, of Interest, and I've stuck to putting on things from CEDAFOP uh, and anything that is uh, relative, um, but not much about the project itself, which is fair enough. But now she's come back and said she doesn't want anything on the group page um, until after the project's finished because we're just coming up to the final report. So again, how do we get over this? I think it's because she doesn't use social media, so she doesn't recognise that it's of any use. So how do we get over changing this mindset? She is a bit like me, the older generation. <laughs> <Don't be safe. laughs> um, so I'll just go over your first uh, question then, Christine. Um, so we we don't always receive a lot of engagement on our posts as well but just to point out one thing as well with especially if you're asking people to comment on your facebook posts um when you're asking people directly to like comment um or reply to um your post uh, on facebook this can sometimes be penalized from the facebook algorithm so it, it does kind of depend on your wording as well uh, what we've found out works as well is ask if you want people to contribute um asking them to share their own experiences or insights um also works well um so we we have been doing we've been running a few lockdown challenges over the past few weeks and they're just simple uh, kind of quick and easy ways people can contribute um so maybe like three questions on what you've uh, learned most about in lockdown for example so I think where people can maybe slightly get put off could be if it's anything too lengthy. Obviously, social media is quite, um, especially on Twitter, it's quite quick kind of scrolling, liking. So maybe making it a bit easier for them if you want interactions in that way or asking them to share their personal insights or their uh, testimonies seem, has, we've seen works well as well. Um, on your second point and kind of changing uh, mindsets, obviously this is really difficult to do. Um, the way I would suggest is maybe if you've got any other examples of, say, um, another project or um, a few examples of existing social media posts that you've seen have worked well to present uh, and show, I think that would be a good way to hopefully try and sway them. Uh, but I don't know, Jen, if you've got any other points you'd like to share on those. Yeah, the, that all sounds really good. I think it's um, just to this is when your analytics really come into play. So you can be showing like the potential audience that is there and as Anna suggested, some other examples. Um, but if you have a website, you could be showing how people are clicking through to it. Um, I suppose just really, really try and showcase your your best cases um, and the, the p potential that it can have. Um, and especially in the current climate, um, online communication is one of the most effective ways for us to, to connect with each other. So um, I, I totally understand and have been in a similar situation. So do feel for you. Um, but if there's, yeah, we'll have a think if there's anything else and we can share with you afterwards. Thanks for that, Christine. Um, I think we're just going to we can jump back to questions if there are any more, um, but we are just going to swap over now to speaking to um, uh, some case studies quickly. If we can speak to Dan and Jack from League Football Education, you should be able to see on screen now a few a few examples of the kind of social media that, that they do produce. Um, but if you'd both like to turn on your um, mic, then I will just stop sharing my screen quickly so everyone can see you. Hello. Hello, have you got five minutes for us? Sorry, yeah. Emma, we're overrunning. I, I, I should make some apologies to everyone. Uh, yeah, we, we, we have another webinar at 11.45, uh, so uh, this might be a very whistle-stop uh, Q&A session. Um, 
But really just to give you guys a, a quick outline, we run a Key Action One uh, vet mobility project. We're dealing with 16 to 18 uh, apprentice footballers who are aiming to become professional players. Uh, a lot of the reason that we, that we do the projects is to really try and encourage them to uh, develop themselves as uh, footballers as well as people uh, and obviously the Erasmus Plus projects really enable that. Uh, we do some projects which involve uh, us taking them on trips for two weeks uh, whilst they're on the uh, apprenticeship programme. We do uh, activities which go for three months placements after they've uh, completed their apprenticeship and if they weren't successful at, at running uh, at gaining a professional contract uh, and the third project area is really working with coaches so that we're getting uh, knowledge and skills into that coaching base to en enhance that experience. Uh, I oversee the whole project and Jack uh, is the uh, communications officer who really does all the stuff that we're talking about today. I hope that's okay for a fairly whistle-stop overview. Uh, and I think maybe you had some questions for us, is that right, that you wanted to run through? Yes. So in terms of your social media, um, what, what platforms do you use and who are your, your sort of key audiences for those? Jack. Yeah. So, yeah, again, sorry for the uh, sort of, <laughs> we're going to have to run through it pretty quickly. Um, I guess primarily we'll use, we use Twitter uh, because we feel it's more flexible for content. So, um, so you can have the videos, you can have uh, images, you can also add text, you can also put links as well. I think Instagram uh, is good for most of those things, but it is restrictive in the fact that you can't caption a link. So if you were wanting to um, tag a link to somewhere like a YouTube video or a website article, Twitter is the place for you to, to, to use. Um, and we use Twitter over Facebook because um, we feel it's probably a bit more connective. So with the hashtags, with um, you know tagging accounts and that sort of thing, uh, with the fact that you can retweet, uh, it just um, it just seems to um, sort of work better if you're trying to network. Um, and I think also we we try to keep consistent hashtags. I know you mentioned hashtags earlier. We 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 sort of have um, LFE trip for the preseason trip. We have LFE coach trip for the coaches one, and LFE placements for the one after the three month placement. So they're, they're sort of simplified, but we, we keep the, the same for pretty much every tweet because, um, you know, you want people to click on that hashtag and see more relevant content. So instead of mixing up the hashtags, which I guess you can add some, but you're obviously limited with characters, but we try and always keep that same one for pretty much every tweet so that people can then see more of your content via that hashtag. Um, and I guess also we sort of use YouTube for, um, videos with a bit more sort of substance to say interviews. Uh, I know you're sort of limited with time on, on Instagram and Twitter if you put in a direct video. So um, you, we, we tend to use YouTube for that. And um, we also have Flickr, which houses our image galleries because we get a lot of imagery from, from the trips. Um, and yeah, we can put them into albums, uh, playlists on YouTube, and then we embed them onto the website. Um, our, our website. So. We try and use um, a wide range, but in different ways, I guess. And what elements of your project do you think perform well on social media? Um, I guess so. We, we also use um, WhatsApp groups when we're doing the trips because we want to get direct access to the people who are on the trips um, and getting sort of the participants to send us their content as well. So we have actually. Um, LFE staff members with them on the trips but that was only getting sort of one aspect of the trip so actually getting the participants in a group we can give them prompts so, so we have uh, itineraries where we know from the office what they're going to be doing that day so we'll just say you know please can you sort of you know get some content on that send it to us or use your own um you know uh, account and tag us in that sort of stuff um so that seems to work uh, very well and uh, I think it gives, like you said before, more personable um, sort of content. So it's not just mm. us being very sort of formal, uh, you know, you get sort of more of an informal look from 16 to 18 year olds, which then 
obviously attracts attention to them as well. And I think once they see that they're being publicised, uh, that they they love they love getting involved. So um, uh, so, so yeah, we we, don't, we tend to not really have a problem with uh, getting you know, uh, sort of content from those uh, kids. Brilliant. Okay, well, I won't keep you any longer because I know you need to, to disappear off. I'm so um, sorry about that. No, don't worry. It's our fault for overrunning. We just, there's just so much you can say about social media. Um, if anyone has any questions... Uh, yeah, email me. Yes, yeah, it's yeah. fine. Yeah. Perfect. Well, yeah. thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, guys. Thanks a Best lot. Of luck. Sorry Cheers. about that. <laughs> Bye. 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 Okay, we'll jump back slightly then. Did were there any other questions for for Jen and Anna after that whistle stop tour? No, we're quite happy. Was any of the information that they shared um, was anything new to anyone, or was it all stuff that you were you're quite happy with? Analytics, yeah. Yeah, I think analytics is a is a key one. I think people see that and think it's really, really tricky and really hard, but actually it does all the work for you. Yeah, analytics again. Yeah, okay. Thought that might be the case, to be honest. Okay, if no one has any other questions, but I mean keep putting them in the um in the question box in the chat box by all means. But otherwise we will move over now quickly to um speak to Mary Hegarty from Bryson Charitable Group. So again you can see um, a bit of uh, a few examples of the type of work that that they post on social media here on the screen now um, but I will do the same thing again and just close this so that um, we can actually see each other properly. So Mary if you would like to unmute yourself. Can I see you? There you are. Yeah. Can you hear me okay? Yes, perfect. Yes, okay. <laughs> um, so, so do you I... want to kick off by telling us a little bit about your about your project? Absolutely, yeah. So um so I work for an organization in Belfast called Bryson Charitable Group. Um and we work um with volunteers, with European volunteers. So through Key Action One um and Erasmus Plus and now with European Solidarity Corps. So the bulk of our work is in hosting volunteers. So we bring volunteers into Northern Ireland and we coordinate them. Um, so we place them in other organisations in Belfast, uh, Northern Ireland. So that's the bulk, that's the bulk of our work. We're also a Eurodesk UK partner organisation and we do some of the training for volunteers in Northern Ireland as well. Brilliant. OK, so what social media platforms do you use? So the main thing which we would use is mostly Twitter and Facebook. We do a little bit of um, Instagram as well, um, but mostly mostly Twitter and Facebook, um, just because of the the people that we're trying to reach. So um, for us, a lot of the social media is about building relationships with our partner organisations. It's about disseminating. The, the work that we do, it's about engaging with the National Agency and Eurodesk. Um, it's a lot of, around those kind of elements. So for us, um, Twitter works well, Facebook works well. Facebook works especially well for, um, we find that a lot of our partner organisations are on Facebook, but not necessarily Twitter. Um, it's also, there's also a difference, of course, with the, with the restriction and characters and, and, and Twitter, you're limited much more to what you can say. Um, whereas in Facebook, you can kind of extend a little bit further. Um, so yeah, so that's our main ones. Instagram very occasionally, but not not so much. And um, who manages the social media in your organisation? Yeah. <laughs> so Heather, can I just can I tell the story then about whenever you contacted? Yes, um, you can. <laughs> Because I have to confess, I did go back to Heather and check that it actually was the Bryson account that she was talking about, the Bryson EBS account she was talking about, because I didn't think that we did a particularly good job. And I was quite surprised because as a 55 year old, completely on tech savvy woman, um, I'm just not, I was, you know, quite, quite amazed to be asked to become part of the case study for this. Um, 
so um, it's me. Uh, it's, me, it's me with the support of all of my fabulous volunteers um, who provide the case studies and provide stories and tell us what they do and happily pose for photographs and create the content for us so much of the time as well. We had a volunteer last year who had really good video skills, so we just kept stealing him. Um, so we sent them out to the different projects to do videos of the volunteers within their actual hosting projects, and that's been a great resource for us to have now. Yeah, I think making the most of what you've got is definitely definitely a good tip, isn't it? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, so yeah. what aspects of your of your projects do you tend to post on social media? So it's really it's really about the, the, the human stories. It's about the volunteer personal interest stories. Um, so it's really for us, it's uh, I guess one of our main things in, in using social media is really celebrating the achievements of the volunteers, is highlighting the fact that they're doing great work for their organisations, that they're, you know, making this commitment to come to, to, to their projects for a year. Um, so, yeah, so it's very much the focus for us is very much on the on the human interest side of things, for sure. And how do you go, get, go about getting your partners involved? So that's, yeah, so so that's quite, it's, it's quite an interesting one for us and quite, a, um, quite an important thing for us, because I think that, um, you know, uh, and this goes back a little bit to Christine, your question earlier on about about engaging people for us as well, um, using social media and involving our partners as part of the dissemination process as well with our projects. Um, so we we kind of really try to encourage our our partner organisations to engage with our social media. Um, it's really nice then whenever if we if we post something that um, you know if we post something about a volunteer, we'll tag their sending organisation and their hosting organisation. And quite often those organisations will will share, reshare those posts as well. Um, so that's a really nice way to kind of continue to build relationships between organisations as well. And you do quite a lot around sort of campaign days, like Anna was mentioning earlier. Um, so, for instance, would you know how would you go about planning for a campaign day? Yeah, so um, so so the ones yeah that we would be involved with would be like through Eurodesk, there would be Time to Move and the other Eurodesk campaigns. Um, the big one for us, I guess, most recently has been Volunteers Week. Um, so uh, we would tie in with, with Volunteers Week um, uh, as is organised um, and plan. We, what we did this year is we, we planned uh, posts for each day of the week which were themed. So the, um, each each day had a particular theme this year. Um, so we had a search around um, kind of, you know, looking at our projects, how closely they linked. Um, looking back at kind of old photographs that we had, if we didn't have something that was more recent, for example, the fundraising day, because our volunteers are not directly involved in fundraising as a regular thing, we pulled out um, the, the, the marathon team that the volunteers um, did a couple of years ago. So they, they ran Belfast Marathon as a, as a team, as a fundraising exercise for Bryson. Um, so yeah, so we take it, we, t we kind of look at the themes, we do the pre-planning for it. We try and kind of look through our resources and find out what's going to be most appropriate for that. And do you find that you post different content on both your your Facebook and your Twitter, or do you keep the content very much the same? I, I keep, uh, yeah, I have to confess, I don't really have the time to create different content for different platforms. <laughs> so I do tend to just, yeah, just, just to repost. I quite often will start with, put it on Twitter first, because that's the one that's more limited, and then share it across to Facebook and expand it if, if necessary, and, and add kind of more people in to, to tag them. And um, do you think by promoting your projects on social media that you've generated any new interest for Bryson Charitable Group? Yeah, I think so. I, I think it's, it's that thing of, you know, as an organisation, we're quite a local charity within Northern Ireland, but it's, it's amazing to really evidence those international links that we have. Um, so I think that it is something that really has been um, a very uh, yeah, a very positive thing and a very interesting thing for us to do in terms of that demonstrative kind of, you know, um, aspect of that, yeah. And to end on, do you have any sort of top tips of things that have worked well for you or any advice for people? Yeah, oh, well, um, 
So I think the things that work well, I mean, I, I think that videos certainly do seem to get engagement. Um, so that's, that, you know, we don't always have the luxury to do that. As I say, we were lucky to have a volunteer last year to create videos for us. Um, but we always, we're always trying to build up a resource of photographs just throughout the projects. So and as volunteers arrive, we always get a photograph of arrival. We encourage the volunteers to send us photographs so we have good visuals to use. Um, and I, and I guess the other thing I would, would, I suppose, just again to reinforce, you know, we're not a slick <laughs> operation in terms of our social media. I would love to say that we've done all that planning and organisation that, that Jen and Anna were talking about, but we, we genuinely haven't. Um, it's very much something that we, we try and manage as we go along and build on as we go along. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I suppose that's the biggest, you know, if I can do it, anybody can do it. Very motivational. <laughs> Brilliant. OK, well, thank you, Mary. Does anyone have any questions for Mary? No, we're quite happy. She's covered should, everything that she does. I should say just to just to highlight the, the um, extent of my technical incompetence. I couldn't manage to get the chat function switched on. on my thing. It doesn't seem to be showing up on my on my little toolbar here. So um, if there's anything in chat, I, I'm afraid I can't actually see it. Uh, there is one message for you, actually. Um, Christine, I don't know whether you want to. Do you want to, to tell Mary? Um, we did a, a lovely volunteering uh, project. I think it was before Erasmus, so it would be um, uh, what's the two projects before <laughs> before Erasmus? I had a senior moment there. Um, but anyway, we did this two-year project, and uh, if ever you want us to share some of the uh, outputs that we had on there, um, I'd be happy to contact you. Okay. I've also got a background of working with hundreds of volunteers in a hospice, so I know some of the issues, how they have to be managed, and managed isn't a, isn't the right word really, but because it's a lot of, a lot of the management techniques don't work with volunteers, you have to treat them in a completely different way. So if you wanted to share our project, I'd be happy to send you the um, information. You can have a look, see if there's anything there that helps. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be sharing a, a delegate list after the event, so you can hopefully you can all keep in contact with each other if, if you'd like to. Brilliant. OK, a any other questions? No. OK, I think we're going to take a quick break at this point then in case anyone needs to nip to the loo or get a drink. Now is your chance. Um, but just before we do, I think it'd be really nice if we could all take a take a picture for social media. I'm sorry, whoever was here last week, because you're going to have to do it again. Um, <laughs> but if everyone wants to, everyone who would like to be involved wants to turn on their cameras. And then Sarah can take a nice little photo for us. <laughs> Sarah, if you want to, to let us know when you're ready. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just going to take the screenshot now. So everyone get ready. OK, that's done. Thank you, everyone. Brilliant. Thank you, Sarah. Yep. So if anyone, yeah, as I said, if we have a quick break, if we meet, let's say if we meet back at five past twelve. But if anyone doesn't want to go, feel free to stick around. We'll be here. We can have a chat. It'll be nice. But yes, we'll join back at five past twelve then, please. Yeah, OK, I think we're probably about ready to get moving again. Um, so for this session now, we're going to move on to a bit of a um, discussion session. So feel free to um, turn your mics on for this if you would like. Um, equally, if, if people prefer not to, then please use the, the, the chat box to get involved. This, this section is really about getting you guys involved and getting your thoughts on things, really. So um, let me just share my screen again.
so the first question I have for you is um, what social media campaigns or hashtags stick in your mind? Which ones stand out that you've seen recently? I've put a few examples on the slide. Um, but have any of these, have you particularly enjoyed seeing any of these? Does everyone recognise all of them? Oh. Mm. No. <laughs> no. Well, just to say that the polling station dogs were was my favourite and that one really stands out to me. I'm a big fan mm. of dogs at polling stations. Every time, every time we have an election, I'm straight on Twitter to see the dogs at polling stations. So. Has anyone seen anything on the, the hashtag stay at home challenge? It's actually a shame that LFE aren't, uh, the league football education had to leave us because I think they actually did a stay at home challenge and had some of their apprentices doing a, a keepy uppy challenge with toilet roll. And I think they got some really good engagement from that one. From what we've discussed so far today, is there any reason why you think challenges like that something like the stay at home challenge or dogs at polling stations might have performed well on social media? Has anyone got any ideas? <clears throat> I mean, there's definitely some elements here that I think I think we've um, discussed today, for instance, the um, the stay at home challenge. It really is all about using user generated content, really um, getting people in your your organization to submit things. Well, I also think why, um, especially the polling station and stay at home challenge, um, for example, the one that we've got for LFE, especially during this lockdown time, I think um, sharing challenges that that bring positivity to people or a bit of fun um, seems to really work well. So, for example, the polling station thing seeing dogs always puts a smile to most people's faces and then the keep up your challenge um is a bit of fun as well so we had we also created um a, a e plus lockdown challenge um i think it was three things you're grateful for during lockdown and that was probably one of our most successful challenges because again it's kind of sharing a, a positive element so keeping people in a positive in a positive mindset um, as well as, again, asking them to bring like their own personal contributions to a challenge. So I personally think those um, work well as well. And then obviously, like the polling station, that's quite iconic. And again, it's something everyone can get involved in and contribute. I think there's a strong element of human connection, isn't there? And yeah. at the moment, we're all we're all constantly providing behind the scenes content. So you're getting an insight into people's houses that you would never have seen before and behind the scenes as people go to vote at polling stations. Mary, I think you did something similar to this, did you not? A bit of behind the scenes. She yeah, yeah. With, with an animal, I believe. Yeah, so our, our, my, our cat Sadie, so, so and working from home, um, we had to obviously had to change everything. So we appointed a new welfare officer uh, with four legs and an awful lot of fur. Um, so Sadie was our welfare officer um, while at working at home. And um, she also did a little bit of kind of data protection file management because she was really keen on just sitting on top of the, the filing box. Um, so, yeah, so that was a bit of fun as well, because it's, it was, you know, that was kind of about that new way of working, wasn't it? It's about that thing that's you know capturing the moment where where people are, are kind of making that adaptation to working in a completely different environment then as well so so yeah and she's yeah she's quite photogenic really so. but <laughs> cat, cat twitter is amazing <laughs> has anyone else done any working from home social media that has that has worked out nicely mm. No, not so much. Well, wait, there's still time. We're, we're still technically in lockdown. There's still time if you want to post a picture of your cat. 
Um, I still put a lot, um, a lot of sort of personal stuff on as well um, that I think might interest people. But I put that on my personal page, not on what I call the business Facebook group pages. They're purely for the projects. They're for mm. project partners and uh, people who want to become partners. So we have about uh, 80 people at a time look at each of our um, group page um, events and interest bits. And I try to direct them to where there's other talk going on about education or uh, learning and development. And I post, um, we went to, we had a group over in February and we took them to Shugborough, uh, which was completely, which is really strange because it was completely closed down in February. Um, but they let us just wander around the servant quarters and, um, and you know, really made us welcome as though we were the only people they'd had all year. <sighs> so that was lovely. The, the, the partners loved that. Uh, and we took them up to North Staffordshire to see the ceramic industry. Um, so, yeah, they enjoyed that. And I, I put those photographs up on there. Yeah, I think things like that that people have been involved in. They like to see that again on social media as well, don't they? It's nice. It's like throwback kind of memories. Mm. Yeah. And I sometimes put um, a reminder of something we might have done five, six years ago, if it's still relevant. Like the volunteering one, I've just started to rebuild that because volunteering is still a huge topic. Mm. Um, so I think that whatever we did was relevant. Uh, yeah. Yeah. particularly with the older generation because one of the things we found out was that the uh, volunteers were aging um, and uh, where is the next generation of volunteers going to come from um, so so yeah we, we we still sort of hash that one about every now and again and regurgitate it reusing content is the best way to go <laughs> So my next question then for everyone is how confident do you currently feel with social media? So if you want to type this in the chat box, that might be that might be the easiest way of doing it. If we rate it from one to ten, if we say that one is not confident at all and ten is super confident, I know exactly what I'm doing all the time. Seven, five. Yeah, confident but scary. Yeah, yeah. Does anyone else want to add their and their thoughts? Generally pretty high. People seem to be quite confident. That's positive. That's really positive. Would be high with analytics knowledge yet. Well, Trevor, maybe hopefully you've got that now. You can after this session have a go and you'll come back and you'll tell us you're a 10, hopefully. Does anyone want to share how their um uh, why they maybe feel that way about social media? Is there is there someone who's maybe put something a bit lower? Jennifer, would you be interested in in telling us what, why do you think why do you feel like you're a six? <laughs> of course, um, I know that yes, social media are really useful for my work for my uh, organization. It's really useful, I know, but. The only problem it's about, uh, you know, the problem that we got with Facebook, for example, with Cambridge, Cambridge Analytics. So I know it's useful, but in the same, same time, it's scary that you don't know where go your, your data, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's why I, I, I know that we need to use and it's, we need because now everybody has a social media account. So, all right, I will, I will use it, but I don't like it. So it's why I'm sick. <laughs> <laughs> How it work with? I know why it's useful, but I don't like to really work on it. Does anyone else get that same feeling mm. that the Maybe they, they feel like they know how to do it. They know why it's important, but they're not comfortable with it. I've had a couple of um, nearly dodgy experiences. Um, I do try when somebody asks to join the group, I do go look at their profile and try and guess why they want to, to mm. join. 
and when I've looked through some of these comments on there, I found some messages on there. That I thought, mm, no, they're just um, they're not really going to be good um, participants at all. They're, yeah. they're either got some views on there that are very right wing or, you know, and some point up some some so, people because we are sorry to cut you, but I don't know if it's the same for you, but um, because we are the page, my organization, it's an open page, you know, you, you just need to like and everybody can add some comments and every, everything. Sometimes they just add you to be, to have many, many things, to know many, many things about you and after they can just take your, take your, your account, you know, it's like a hacker. Mm. So it's pretty scary. Yeah. And um, ju just to jump in, Christine, so certainly on a Facebook group, you could add some uh, set questions for every time a, a member tries to join your group. You could get them to say exactly why they want to join and then you could uh, approve or deny them based on yeah. their answers. I, I do. I do do that. Great. Uh, but I still find a lot of people want to join and don't want to answer the questions. So I, I leave them hanging there for a week or so. And <laughs> <laughs> if you can't be bothered to answer the questions you don't you don't really want to see what we're doing um yes yeah. absolutely but the but you just made a very good point um we do have to be i i think i'm my son says i'm paranoid perhaps i am but um i still think i'm fairly careful with uh and if i do suspect that someone is um not there for the right reasons i toss them out straight away um because i don't think we need it I do yeah, find okay. um, LinkedIn, uh, I've been there since the days of Academy, long before it was LinkedIn. And uh, I find, again, as you just said, that um, I must have 1500 connections, but I, I don't know what they're there for. They don't, you know, when they ask to connect, I say, what, what's the synergy? What, what is it you think that uh, we can get from this connection? And I get no answer. So I, I do think people are just collecting numbers. They like to say they've got a thousand connections or whatever. They're not really there to learn anything and they're not there to participate. So again, I'm, I tend to, I don't bother too much with LinkedIn. I'm there. Yes, but absolutely. And I think that's where um, in the world of analytics, you get people who are just after vanity metrics and it's absolutely what you're saying. They just want the mass following, but they're not there to engage. So we really try to emphasize that it's all about two way conversation. It's supposed to be replicating networking in real life. So what's the point otherwise? I have found some uh, just in lockdown. I found some wonderful networking groups of business people. Um, where it's a closed group and you, you join the group by invitation and I found some wonderful knowledge in there, um, not just about, le well, about learning and development, about education, about how to run your business and I find there's an awful lot of, um, they are prepared to collaborate, they invite you in for that reason. Uh, so I belong to about oh, five or ten of those, I think I've got three tomorrow um you know that I that I get a lot of value out and I don't mind giving the time um but as you say some people just are collecting sorry I'm doing a lot of talking I shut up now <laughs> no that's what it's what the discussion <laughs> session's for <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure as well was it not uh Zuckerberg himself who said that the future of Facebook is private meaning everyone is now going to be using these sorts of groups because we are scared of having so much public information I think mm. the future is groups so if you're if you're not engaging with groups on Facebook I think it's definitely definitely an area to start looking at mm. Mm. Um, okay next question so if we do this one using the raise your hand function again who here has a social media strategy there's no shame we won't we won't tell you off if you don't have a strategy we're okay with that two people by the looks of it that's very interesting okay so when you are planning your promotion dissemination at the beginning of your project 
is social media something that you consider? Does anyone want to, to share their thoughts on that? Hmm. Yeah, sorry me again. Um, that's why I put up a project a group for each project that we're running, because I start the dissemination process almost from day one by getting people involved on what we're doing. And it's amazing because sometimes they come back and say, well, why, why can't we be in this project? Uh, and then I have to find some way of, of them collaborating, but not being part of the project. So, uh, so yeah, um, that's, that's sort of my, I don't know whether that's a social media strategy, perhaps it is, I don't know. But yes, um, that's one for each, one for each project. And we yeah. even have one for um, people who haven't been to university. Okay. Who want to share, we call it University of Life. And if they've, if they've got anything they want to share that they've learned through life, then that's, a, that's another group. That's quite that's really nice. Yeah, that sounds like a nice group. Trevor, you said that it was something that you spoke about in the beginning, but maybe haven't put it into action. So did you? Yeah, we, we do a lot. We do a lot of, of and, and across a number of platforms and we make use of a lot of film, infographics, all the good things we've been here of, but we don't actually formally put it into a plan. Mm. Um, and it's something that we talk about a lot, but we need to actually do, you know, to formalize it and to get it across all all the different um, channels. Because we're, we're literally on everything from and Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, do a lot of our own filming, a lot of signposting the website, even use WhatsApp broadcast, broadcast lists and many other things. But it's not sort of formalized and we don't, you know, it's not um, allocated to different people to be doing different things at different times. So, which is one of the reasons why, you know, I'm on, on this learning network to try and find out more. And we don't do the follow up with the analytics, which is our big weakness. Yeah, I think. Oh, go ahead. Go on. Sorry. <laughs> I was just going to say, I think, again, it's one of these things that a strategy can be as simple or as complex as you want it and um, even just a one pager can be a good starting point. I am much more of an advocate for live strategies that people use rather than you yeah. spend ages writing it, getting it all signed off and then no one looks at it again, whereas something that's that's more of a working document that you can go back to um, and it sounds like you're, you're halfway there so it's just, just bringing them all into one place mm -hmm. or having a a meeting where you we have, we have some really good stuff I mean, mm. one one pe person who works with us ben has just produced this brilliant infographic about um volunteering opportunities after covid you know for uh solidarity core things with our partners across europe um you know it's been shared 48 times since yesterday it's you know it's getting really getting out there and he's mm. had lots of response um, but, you know, that was just one person doing it and thinking now's a good time to do it rather than formalizing it in in the way that between all of us, we know what's going on and we know what the strategy is. Yeah, yeah I, I think um, certainly it's some kind of analytics or a report. So you hold on to that really good content can be a great starting point for you and then go go on from there. I think so for, proje for projects as well, it's um, it's not what we do. Generally, I, I would think very few of us do it, but report on analytics um, in the dissemination part of final reports and things like that. We don't tend to do it and we don't see, you know, what we've what we've hit and where it's going, um, which is probably something somewhere we could actually improve in final reporting as well. I think promotion and dissemination is one of those areas that quite a lot of people struggle with when it comes to the final report. And I think that is for instance that's a really easy thing you could do even even if you don't do it as often as as maybe Jen suggested even if you're not doing it every month but at some point during your project if you're sitting down and looking at how many people have we reached through social media yeah. that's a really key statistic that you can include in your final report and it's quite easy to do it's an easy thing to collect yeah absolutely I mean we're we're actually making now we have we have a website uh, which is dedicated to Every project has its own full report on the website, so it has its own sub website. Mm. So, so our last two that we've done, 
um, we've created all, all the content for a website for the actual project. So, it, but at the end, it's just getting the information out there and doing the analytics on that as well. Mm. 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 Okay, that was that's really interesting actually to see some insights into that. Um, what I would like to do now is um, move over to something called Jamboard. I don't know whether anyone has used Jamboard before, but essentially it's, it's part of Google. Um, and what I'd like to do is we'll move there and have a, a few more questions. Just before I send you the link, I will share a link that everyone's got access to it. But just before I do, I'll show you on my screen, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, how it looks so you can see what to expect. So um, this is Jamboard and I will, there are a few questions here. Um, if you look at the top, you can see we've got different pages and you'll all be able to move through the pages, but I'd like us to do it together if we can. Um, and what we what I would like is for you to click the sticky note that you'll see on the sidebar here. There's a little sticky note button. Press that and type whatever your answer is. You can change the colour, anything you'd like. Click save and the sticky note will appear. And we can we can move these around so that we're seeing everybody's answers. Um, so yes, I will share this link with you now so that everyone can contribute to this. <coughs> so if you look in the chat box, you should now have the link to Jamboard. So let me know if everyone, if anyone's having any issues getting onto that. But from what I can see, we've got people, people joining at the top here. All sorts of interesting animals joining. That's just how they do it to keep you anonymous. But yep. Yeah, so feel free to um, stick your um, microphones on, and we can discuss this as we go. But yeah, if you would like to give me three words that you think describe your current social media approach can be as serious or as not serious as you like. We don't mind. But yeah, if you just want to add the sticky note that's on the side. It's all anonymous, so there's there's no judgment. <laughs> Haphazard, I love that. <laughs> Volunteer focused, visual, informal. Okay. Does anyone else have anything to add? Yep, a couple more coming through. <coughs> Community focused, engaging, experimental. Does anyone want to elaborate on any of the points that they've put up? I'm glad by the sounds of it, no one is struggling too much by the sounds of it. And most of it seems very, yeah, community or volunteer focused. It's nice to hear that that's, that's what you're aiming for, really. I think, Heather, one thing I would say just about ours is that we we're always trying to make sure that we have plenty of good photographs in our stock um, mm -hmm. so that we can use good visuals um, because I think that's and, it, and for us it's really important that any any photographs that we're using are real volunteers and they're real projects and they're real experiences rather than kind of you know buying something else and taking something somewhere else. Yeah definitely I think that's so important to have isn't it it really does help. OK, so if, if you want to press to next frame at the top of the screen, then you should now go to the question, what do you post about? So if you want to add add sticky notes here, what what in your project do you normally post about? Oh. oh. <clears throat> So 
everyone found the next page okay? We're all on that one. Participant experiences, yeah. Course promotion. That's quite an interesting one. Um, do do people find that social media is a good way to to get people involved? Do you find new participants through social media? Yeah. I had a yep, but I didn't. It's... That's me. Sorry. Oh, was it you? Sorry. <laughs> you might know. <laughs> so, so it works then. Uh, yeah, uh, um, and what I really like is it keeps me in touch with past partners because they tell me what they're doing now, what they've mm. just had approved. Um, um, so it sort of um, enlarges the whole experience. And I think people like to know what somebody else is doing. Mm -hmm. They don't yeah, want to know what you're doing. They want to know what everybody else is doing. Yeah, you're almost the, the centre of the network in some ways, aren't you? I, I feel I am, and I sometimes yeah. wonder whether that's actually a, a negative thing. Is that why people aren't responding? Because they think Christine's doing it all. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I suppose. <laughs> I can't imagine that would be the reason. Mm, I, it, it, it has crossed my mind. So sometimes, some days I go quiet, and then they'll say, are you all right? <laughs> <laughs> well it's also worth thinking about maybe using the idea of some sort of takeover so mm. getting encouraging one of the participants to take over the social media even if it's just for a day maybe that would vary your content give it a bit of a different uh, voice that is a good idea yes we had um, it was my husband's 80th birthday a couple of weeks ago and we did a zoom and we got about oh, 95 people there and there were only two personal friends who, who turned up. They were invited, but only two turned up. And all the rest were European partners. Really? Yes. Wow. <laughs> I was amazed from all over the world. They just all piled in. And <laughs> <laughs> it was lovely. He, he had a wonderful birthday. He said it was the best one he'd ever had. Aww. It was all online. But yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think birthdays in lockdown is definitely... It's a changed experience. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, but I, I was amazed that they were all still interested enough. But I think if I hadn't been doing the social media thing, then I don't think they would have kept in touch. Mm. Yeah, it's a really good way to keep, I think keep people up to speed, gone. I think. Mm. Gosh, I've got some interesting things here. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to make a few of these a little bit bigger because I have terrible eyesight. Uh a project stories about four yeah inside our workshop so does anyone so whoever said the inside our workshop is that is that posting live while you're doing an event or something like that uh, no it's uh, for example some of our volunteers are working on sewing machine or some typical uh, thing inside our workshop just to show what they what they are doing at this moment because it's not the usual mm. and do people engage quite well with that things that that aren't normal yeah they're not the typical content yeah for example uh because we work in in a, in a workshop and we repair sewing machine and tools sometimes we receive some really old sewing machines so we we say what we are doing and how we how we are able to fix it for example and we wow. yeah that's really nice content isn't it something that's just yeah people different. are interested by this because they sometimes the machine has maybe more than 100 years so wow quite <laughs> nice yeah that's great that's really interesting mm -mm. okay so if we go to the the next question then what works well? So you've just mentioned one thing that works well for you, posting unique and, and interesting content. Is there anything anything else people feel 
works particularly well for them. So this is uh, frame three out of five now. Community hashtags, yeah, great. Does anyone want to give any examples of the kinds of hashtags that you use? I know for us, a lot of them are maybe quite quite sector focused, the sorts of hashtags we would use. Does someone want to elaborate on the on the cardboard box? What's cardboard box? Am I am I behind on something here? <laughs> Me again, <laughs> because we um, our machine it's not for Northern Ireland. It's for uh, people who live in Tanzania, Malawi, Ghana. So we have a lot of shipment and cardboard box. It's when we put the bar, the sewing machine or tool inside the box for the shipment. So I use a lot of emojis. <laughs> Oh, I see. OK, so these are sorry, I misread the thing. So these are the sorts of emojis that you're, you're yeah. using quite often. I see. Yeah. OK, oh, nice, nice. <laughs> Links to streaming TV. That's quite interesting. So so posting almost external content that that works well, then, does it? Mm. Yeah, that was that was me. Um, we our, we have a partner in Cornwall uh, called Chaos who have their own radio and TV station and they stream it out live and for a couple of hours a week with them we do a, an international hour so we've been having people on from all of well hell we've had people on from Indonesia and the Philippines and just talking about international experience generally and we've done a lot of a lot of work around um, Euro peers, Euro desk. In fact, we've had some of your Euro desk colleagues on from Ecoris on it as well. So, and we've used social media to promote that. So through Twitter, through Facebook, um, but basically promoting the links and for people to go and watch the Chaos TV. So, that's worked well for us. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I think that was that was Eva who got involved in that. Was it? I'm sure we were all watching. Yes, from our she side. Was, she we was, probably yeah, did boosted was, your views. It was very good. Yeah. <laughs> but we got a lot of exposure from it. It's been it's been really really worthwhile. Well, that's a really nice example of of teaming up with your partners, maybe on something they excel at, and kind of getting yeah. on the back of something that your partners it's are good made, at. It's even made us your... think as well about streaming, looking mm. at the whole streaming thing generally um and you know having the right equipment and and that sort of thing as well to uh, yeah. to work on that so. so how about if we go to the next page then and look at some challenges what have you found difficult when you've been working with social media Never enough time. Yeah, I think that is a a classic problem. Yeah, time and, and, and being regular seems to be seems to be a common issue. Staying in contact with our with the community. So you find that quite difficult through social media, is someone saying. Keeping up with trends, I mean, social media moves faster than anything else, I think. Yeah, so I could definitely see how that would that would be a common issue. Staying relevant, yeah. Yes, 
Yeah, I think being proactive with posting is something that's quite difficult. I think even like it, it's quite normal for, for an organisation to schedule a lot of their posts. So being it, it can put you off being proactive, I think. But it is important because at the end of the day, I think social media, it is a conversation really, isn't it? So you need to be there to have the conversation. Or I think this is when you could take advantage of something like having a hashtag that your users and your participants own more than you. So then if they're sharing their pictures or their experiences, you can then uh, repost that yourselves um, and use them more as your ambassadors if you're just feeling like you're struggling to get the posts out there. Mm. And, and time, um, t not, not your own time constraints, but we've got people in Australia who are uh, so many hours ahead of us um, that by the time they catch up the following day, they're 24 hours <laughs> out of date. So there's, you know, not trying to post things when, you know, people will be asleep or not uh, not in office mode when it's it's their personal time, like Saturdays and Sundays. You know, that's becoming almost like a work day, isn't it? Yeah, and I think I think as Jen was saying about looking at your analytics, that's really useful to see when your audience are online, when they're most likely to be looking at your content. It's a great way to inform when you do these kinds of things. <clears throat> I'm aware that I'm running slightly over time here. So if we just click to the last question, um, given the response we've maybe had on, on analytics so far, maybe this should be a, do you track your performance rather than how do you track your performance? <clears throat> Yeah, probably the, the answer was I was probably expecting there. <laughs> yeah, someone is using their Twitter analytics, that's positive. Ah, so someone's doing doing the hard work by themselves by just going back through and seeing what was liked and what was read. Yeah, I think definitely getting involved with some analytics would help you there. Mm. Oops. <laughs> yeah, we'll certainly make sure we send some useful links around the analytics side as it sounds like lots of people will benefit from that. I seem to have lost control of my <laughs> screen a little bit here. I might need to stop sharing for a moment. No, my internet has seemingly frozen, unfortunately. So if anyone's added any other thoughts, I'm really sorry. I don't think I can see them right now. I've lost Jamboard. <laughs> oh, yeah, we seem to have disappeared. Oh, oh, oh. I went back to chat for a second and I think that's done it. No. That has Okay, well, I, th I think we've we've got a few thoughts on there. I think most the the main thing to take from that one is people would like to be doing more analytics, and um, hopefully, if we can share some resources, that will, that will help you on the way. So, if we um, if we close down Jamboard now, we can all close that and come back to the. Well, we uh, get to of that. Do if you're interested, I can I can I can share that as well as part well, of the follow up materials. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because there were some other things that I noticed that other people have put up. Yeah, no, I can I can certainly certainly share that. Um, 
Okay. Well, I think that's that is probably everything from us, to be honest. Um, thank you so much all for joining. Um, if anyone does have any questions, we'll we'll stick around for a bit if there's anything you'd you'd like to ask us. But um, before you do leave, um, it would be really helpful if you could fill in the feedback form that Sarah's about to post in the group. Um, it's very short, just a few questions. Um, but this is really helpful for us, especially because we're just starting out with virtual events. It's really useful for us to be able to improve week on week based on feedback. Um, so if you do fill it in, you're helping yourselves and others and we'd be really, really grateful. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's everything from us, though. But yeah, thank you all so much for being part of it. I think it's been been a really good session. So, um, yeah. We'll be around if you would like to ask us any more questions, but if not, thank you very much and goodbye. Have a great rest of your day.